Hello everyone, John here from Vulgar Kitten Studios, and now we're going to actually wrap up our saving scripts uh, using MySQL and everything. So let's just go ahead and get started and not waste any time. So we'll come into Unity, and uh, I'm just going to make sure that I save my scene for the main menu scene, and we're going to go into the game scene now. And now that we have this, let's just go ahead and check our player spawn. We have our spawn script attached. So let's go ahead and edit script. And again, I need to open up all of my fields in here, my regions. It's a little annoying having to do that every time, but really using regions like that is extremely useful when trying to keep your code organized. Uh, so that would be one recommendation that I would make. Uh, in here, we're actually going to do the same thing that we did in our character creator. We're going to use the Boom Lagoon JSON library, and we're going to use our data manager. Now uh, the first field that we're going to need is a game object. We're going to need a reference to our player camera. And we'll also need a uh, private, uh, not private ref, a private reference to our server. And we'll call that server. And that's equal to a new server. And we'll also need a private uh, private game object, and we'll call that character character object, just as before. And I'm also going to make a private vector three, and we're going to call this position. Okay, so now we'll come down into our start method. Again, we're going to change this into an iNumerator class, uh, just because we want to use the coroutine functionality. So first of all, we'll yield return start coroutine, and we'll want to get our data. So server.get data, and we want to get that for the user with the ID of 1. All right, so now one thing to be noted is it's terribly inefficient to get that data every time we load a scene. So probably what you would want to do is implement a singleton pattern by using don't destroy on load on an object. You would just like hold all of your character data and reference that through your scripts, but instantiate that at your main menu and use don't destroy on load just to be able to have that only retrieve it once. Um, but like I said, just, this is just for speedy expediency. Uh, we're doing it this way. So first of all, we're going to say if server.data.getObject and we're going to check for the character object and then we're going to say if that contains key and we're going to check for the location key and remember we don't actually have that at this point in time uh, but we want to check for it just in case and we're also going to have an else clause as well and if it does, then we want to set our position equal to server.getVector3. And we want to get that for the character object where the key is the location. And remember, this is going to create a vector3 out of the object that we have saved. And otherwise, we're just going to set the position equal to this transforms position. And the reason that we're doing that is because uh, our spawn player object that holds the spawn player script also doubles as the anchor point at which we want to instantiate our characters as well. And also, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a check just to see if the uh, server.data.contains key and we're going to check just for the character just for the character object and matter of fact we could probably nest this within uh, this field here and uh, that would be a little bit safer and we're also going to have an else clause in here as well and the reason is we don't want to try to get the object character if it doesn't exist. So we're going to check first if the key is there, then we can do all of this mess. And if it is there, we actually want to instantiate the character. So 
we're going to create a game object and call that go, just geo for game object. And we'll say resources dot load. And we'll just do the exact same thing as we did in our player creator or our character creator. And we'll get the server dot data dot game object uh, or get object, sorry. Get object. The object that we want to get is the character dot get string and we want to get the string for the body. Now we already know that uh, we have a body object just because we won't allow the player to actually play the game without saving a character first. So we don't have to do any error tracking here. And we want to cast that as a game object. And next we'll actually want to instantiate the object. So we'll say character object is equal to game object type casted instantiate and we want to instantiate go at uh, the position and we'll probably want to just we'll just use this transform dot uh, rotation for the rotation like so and again we don't want that clone to be on there so we're gonna say uh, character object dot name is equal to go dot name and we'll also want to get the color so we'll say character object dot renderer dot material dot color is equal to server dot get color and we want to get that from the character and the key is again color like so and then if there isn't a uh, character then what we want to do is just uh, do our default again and this is again just type or not type checking but error checking which isn't really necessary uh, but just in case anybody does uh, somehow get in here then we want to just instantiate a cube and we'll say that as game object and then we'll just say character object is equal to game object instantiate and we'll instantiate that at the obj and we'll do that at our position transform dot rotation like so and now we'll want to check we'll say if our character object does not equal null then we'll want to set our player camera dot set active to true and so now we're actually assuming that it's going to be off by default so let's come back in here and that load and we'll just go ahead and tick off the actual object for our main camera we'll come back into our code and first of all let's just go ahead and get rid of this update uh, because we won't need it and tidy this up just a little bit we'll make it public void and call the save location location and bring that over and we'll make a JSON object and call this the vector and that's going to be equal to server dot make vector 3 and we're going to make the vector 3 out of our current position so we'll say character object dot transform dot position and now we'll actually need to save that into our current data so we'll say server dot data dot get object and we want to get the object character and then we want to add on the key location with the value of vector which we probably could have just called that location or lock or something like that uh, but this is fine and we'll go ahead and start our coroutine and the coroutine we want to start is server.save data for the ID of 1 and pass in the server.data 
and this will ensure that whatever data that we already have will not be lost at the time of saving new data so that's the reason that we do it uh, in that way okay so let's go ahead and go back into unity make sure we don't have any errors and we don't so let's go ahead and hook up our save location uh, into our button here so we'll go ahead and add an event handler and we're, we use that method in the player spawn script which really doesn't make a lot of sense I just didn't want to make another script to save the location so I'm going to use player spawn and we'll use spawn and save location and this is another reason you'd probably want to make a manager class out of the character's data uh, just so that you can uh, you can manage all of this with a singleton and you don't have to worry about having all your methods scattered out through a bunch of different scripts uh, but we'll get into all that later alright so the reason that we actually turned off the camera is because we want to set the camera's position once the character has been loaded so let's go ahead and come to our scripts and do we have that attached? No we don't so we'll actually want to attach our player camera script right here and let's just go ahead and open up the player camera script now and this is a, an extremely simple script like I said you'd probably want to use your own camera logic just uh, modify it to uh, so that it won't actually try to find your character until after the character has been instantiated alright so now we'll make a private we'll make a private transform and I'm gonna call that player and in our start method uh, we'll go ahead and position the camera so we'll say player is equal to game object dot find game object with tag make sure you get object not objects because we want to get a single object not an array of objects we want to find the object player and we want to get that transform alright so now we've actually assumed that our character is going to have the tag of player so let's go back into unity and uh, what we'll need to do is actually tag our resources so we'll come in here and get all of our character resources and tag those guys player and I'll also need to make sure that I edit advanced format my document and now all we'll need to do is just come into our update method and say transform dot look at uh, our player so that way it's always looking at it and as a matter of fact we'll also need to make sure that we set the position and the and parent it so we'll say transform dot position is equal to a new vector three and we'll send that to the player dot position dot x for the x and we'll have to do a little math for the y and the z uh, but it shouldn't be too hard our objects are pretty small so we'll say player dot transform dot position dot y plus three to bump it up on the y axis about three we'll say player dot transform dot position dot z and then we'll subtract from that uh, probably about five units just to make sure that we have enough room to view everything and make sure we don't get our syntax wrong there and finally we we'll just want to parent that to make sure that it stays with uh, the character at all times so we'll say transform.parent is equal to trans or is equal to the player which is already a transform so we're fine there and that's all that we need to do for our player camera and we'll come back in here and the player is definitely used now so that should go away Let's just go ahead and create our character motor and I quite literally uh, just like when working with some proof of concepts like this and I just rip it right out of the docs. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come over to Unity Scripting <coughs> and make sure that we allow block content and probably be a lot faster in the browser. Okay. Well that's fine and we'll go ahead and search let's see well you know what let's oh well it's there okay 
undefined. No, we want to use character controller dot move. That's what we want to search for. And we'll just rip it right out of the dock so we can move around, make a few modifications. All right, so we'll get the move method. And wow, this page is really slow in Visual Studio. Okay, so we want to get these public fields and properties. So we'll go ahead and copy those. Come over to our player motor. Just paste those in our public and come back in here. We got a private, so let's grab that private and put that right there. And now we actually have the logic that's in the update method. So let's just copy that out and put that into the update method. And like I said, I do want to change this around a little bit because I want to be able to rotate. So I'm going to copy this horizontal axis and make that zero. And then outside of the grounded check, I want to say transform.rotate. And I want to rotate around the y axis by the amount of the horizontal. And I want to multiply that by um, 100 and probably multiply that by time dot delta time and then give it zero for the z and that looks pretty good um, yeah I don't think that we really need anything else so let's just go ahead and save and go back in here and of course we're gonna get that error so or not error but warning so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that now And if our logic is right, we should be able to just go ahead and play. So let's play, let's see what happens. And we have an unassigned reference, so uh, that's the camera. So we'll need to come into the spawn here and grab our camera and just put that right in there. So let's go ahead and try to play again. All right, so it actually loaded our data. And so now I'm going to move probably not over there. Let me move over to the blue column and I'm going to save my location. Come out of here and let's check and see if it's saved. So click on user data again and actually I'll just refresh this page. We did get a location so uh, this is wanting me to go into root or to log into PHP my admin and I'm going to click edit and just make sure that that is a child of the character which it looks like it is so now in theory we should be able to just play and yes our location was saved alright so let me go ahead and control s to save this and we'll come back into our not our game but our main menu and we'll change a few things around so I'm going to go ahead and play uh, we still get the same character let me change it to a cylinder I'm going to go with a blue color and I'm going to save the character and play the game. <laughs> now we have a blue cylinder. And this is all being retrieved from the server. So I'm going to go ahead and save the location. Stop playing. Play again. We should get the blue cylinder. We do. So I'm just going to go ahead and play. And we're right by our yellow column. Alright. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. Like I said, the scripts aren't really all that complex but the idea itself is very much worth expanding upon and I hope that you found this proof of concept at least a little bit interesting and uh, let me know what your thoughts are and thank you for watching I'll see you in a future video